Well, a brand new study on faith to share with you this Christmas Eve, and it has some very interesting findings, chief among them that people with no religious affiliation are now the third largest group in the world, coming in just after Christians and Muslims. Pastor Robert Jeffress, he is the pastor of the First Baptist Church in Dallas, and he's also a nationally syndicated radio and television host and rabbi. Aria Spiro is the author of Pushback, Reclaiming Our American Judeo-Christian Spirit. And he's also the president of Caucus for American. Thank you both for joining us. So first of all, I would ask you both, does that study surprise you that people with no um, religious affiliation are now ranked third in the world? And Rabbi, I'll begin with you. Well, it is surprising. It's very worrisome. But you know, for many people, especially those that are secular, they've adopted a new religion and it's called liberalism. Left liberalism is providing them a, an outlook, an attitude towards life, and uh, it's not necessarily sourced in our Judeo-Christian ethos, and it's problematic not only for people as individuals, but for the nation, because a nation needs an identity, it needs a morality. Our identity has always come from the Old and New Testament, the Judeo-Christian ethos, and morality is always best when it is based on God's word, otherwise morality can slide into moral relativism. And, and Pastor Jeffress, I would assume that you agree. I do agree with the rabbi from what we're experiencing in our own church, First Baptist Church in Dallas, and that is that people seem to be reluctant to put a religious label on themselves. Our church is growing tremendously right now. We're getting ready to open a $130 million campus on five blocks of downtown Dallas, and the reason we're growing is we're having people from all different religious backgrounds, Catholics, Methodists, Episcopalians, and they're coming to our church because we don't emphasize being a Baptist. We don't talk about that. We talk about being a follower of Christ, and we don't teach some man-made creed. We teach the Bible. And what I'm finding is people are hungry not for religion. They're hungry for a relationship with God. And I believe any uh, church or synagogue that offers that is going to attract people. And, and Rabbi Spiro, I would ask you, you know, talking about the future of religion in our daily lives, we look at the, the news headlines that we've experienced, you know, the mass shooting at Sandy Hook, the shooting happening today in New York with the firefighters. Um, what do you think about the future of religion? One of these studies, it talked about the median age. You know, specifically, I can pull out uh, Judaism, which has uh, 14 million adherents, 0.2% uh, of the entire world. It has the highest median age at this point of 36. So what do you think are the growth aspects there? Well, in order for it to grow, we have to assert the importance of religion. There's more to life than simply being a good person. And re religion offers you as a relationship with God and an understanding of what is right and what is wrong. A life without God is a diminished life, in my opinion. So feel-goodism should be replaced with what? I think historical, traditional religion, which has a message, what is right, what is wrong, uh, what truly is uh, our, our, our way to a relationship with God. And that, of course, will make the world better. But it's very important for the nation. The nation was founded on a Judeo-Christian right. ethos, which is specific. And it has more to do with just simply feel-goodism. And pa Pastor Jeffers, we only have about 30 seconds left. So a final word from you. Well, I would say, uh, as a final word, you know, this tragedy in Connecticut is proof of, uh, I believe, uh, what happens when we don't have that foundation that the rabbi talked about. I was debating uh, the leader of the American Atheist Association, and I said, you know, the fact that evil occurs and you care about it proves the existence of God. Because why is it we call evil evil? There's no evolutionary uh, explanation for that. It's because we've been created in the image of a God who absolutely hates evil. And I believe both the rabbi and I have the same message in this sense, mm -hmm. and that is we believe a relationship with God is what gives fullness, meaning, and morality to life. And to this holiday season. Thank you both for joining us. We appreciate the message today. Thank, Thank you. you.